So, first of all, we're going to look at John chapter 19, verse 19. John chapter 19, verse 19. Now, I don't know if some of you have heard this, but there is a thing called Yeshua. Now, Yeshua is supposedly the Hebrew name for Jesus. Now, you probably see in my other videos where I acknowledge that the Hebrew translation for Jesus can be Yeshua. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying that is the true Hebrew translation. So before some, uh, some Yeshua people start clapping their hands and some other Christians get upset at me for acknowledging this, this is one I want to make clear. Yeshua is not the original Hebrew translation during Jesus' day. I want to stress that fact. I want to stress the fact is that we don't know. This is a modern Hebrew translation. Now why do I say that? The reason why you must understand that Hebrew was a dead language for more than a thousand years. You got to realize this was revived recently during the mid 1900s perhaps. But it was during the later centuries that Hebrew was revived. So during that time the Jews they were losing their Hebrew language. With that large of a time gap, how will you know? But the thing to understand is that the ones who were carrying the Hebrew language was the Jewish leaders, which is very interesting. Now, aside from that fact, we don't know the original Hebrew of that time. But what I'm going to tell you is this, is that Yeshua is weaker in proof than Yahweh. Now, that's one thing I want to stress. So when I'm tolerating Yeshua, I'm giving a lot of tolerance here because Yahweh, they give the evidences here. They give the evidences of the archaeological historical findings. But you saw in my two other videos that I strongly disagree with this translation. So I'm not going to do it on this video. This one is a wrong translation. This is actually after a pagan god. And I proved that one. Yeshua on this one though, you gotta understand there is no proof for this. Not, not even archaeological findings for this one. Amen. Come on. You gotta understand this one is totally made up. It's theorized. It's guessed. You might say, how did they come up with the name Yeshua then? So what they did was they theorized by looking at the Hebrew name Yehoshua. By taking the Hebrew name Yehoshua, they guessed that the Jews during the time of the Dead Sea Scrolls had a habit, had a habit of shortening words. So ever since the time of the Old Testament, through the time of the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is during Jesus' time, they claim during that time period of the Jews after the Babylonian exile, they had a habit of shortening words. So Yehoshua is now shortened to Yeshua. That's what they theorize. That's quite a lot of guesswork. At least for the Yahweh people through Jesenius, they give a lot more explanations through what they call theophoric names and archaeological findings. But that was completely debunked earlier, as I showed you. All right, anyways, aside from that fact, this is what they claim. And this is totally very wild in theory. Now, I'm going to explain this as well. Yeshua is not only weak in evidence, you got to understand this too. If we were to also think logically, Yeshua may not make sense. It doesn't make sense with a lot of things during Jesus' time period as his true name. There's a lot of weak points concerning this. So let me give you an example for you to think about. If I were to mention a Hispanic's name to a bunch of Americans, and then vice versa, we usually say the name as it is. So let's say, for example, here, Jose. So if I were to mention the Hispanic person's name, Jose, to a bunch of Americans, the pronunciation sound, the way I might pronounce it, may not tr really be Hispanic in sound pronunciation, but it's going to retain the same name, Jose, right? But the thing is, is that I'm not going to translate Jose to a bunch of Americans, right? I'm going to retain the name as it is, Jose. That's natural with names. It's the same thing if a Hispanic person were to mention an American's name. Let's say the American's name is Smith. And this Hispanic person was talking to a bunch of Hispanic people, and then he referred to this guy. He's going to say Smith. 
Now, the pronunciation might sound different, but he's going to retain that same name, Smith. So here's the point. The point is, if one language is going to be uh, mentioned, communicated to a different language, they're going to retain the name. That's the point. The point is the name is going to be similar. It's going to be close. It's yeah. not going to be totally off the charts and totally different. Yeah. That's the point. That's, it would be strange if we translate it, right? If we translate the name every time we do a normal conversation. Oh, Jose, catch the ball. We're not going to translate the name every time. You know, at the rush of the moment, if we were playing, you know, kickball or something like that, dodgeball. Jose, dodge the ball. We're not going to translate it every time. We're going to normally, normally people usually say the name as it is. That's just common sense. It would be totally strange if we totally translated to a different word. Now, this is the point that I'm trying to make here. The point that I'm trying to make is that when the Hebrew Pharisees brought Jesus to Pilate and they introduced Jesus to Pilate, they would obviously pronounce Jesus' name as it is. They're not going to translate it to a totally different word, or it may sound weird, right? So the point is, is that if the language during Jesus' time, so Pilate, he's a Roman, right? Here are the Pharisees, they're Hebrews, right? And I don't know if you knew this, the common language, the popular language during that biblical era was Greek. That's why your New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. I don't know if you knew that. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. But the original New Testament was not written in Hebrew, it was written in Greek. So this was the language, this was the common language. Of that time. The common language of that time was Greek. Think about this. If you look at your Greek New Testament, the Greek New Testament for Jesus will be Jesus. That's what it's going to be. That's Greek. Now let's talk about Latin here, right? Pilate's a Roman. Let's talk about Latin. Latin is actually Jesus. Now, did you notice how close these words are with the English word Jesus? So this is not a fake name. There are some, not all, there are some Yeshua people that vehemently attack our English usage of Jesus that that's not the right name. Okay, the point is this though. If you look at Greek, that's very close. If you look at Latin, that's very close. And then Hebrew, look how far off that is. Isn't that very, very different? See, the point is, is that when the Pharisees, who are Hebrew, are going to mention Jesus' name to Pilate, who's Roman, and the common language, that's Greek. Greek, they would say Jesus, and then Latin, Jesus. They pronounce it differently, but it's going to be Similar, the same name. How is this even close? In Hebrew, it's going to have to be something close to this. As a matter of fact, I don't know if people even know this, but there actually, there are rabbinical writings that show it's this one. It's not Yeshua, but Yeshu. You see how Yeshu is close to Yeshus and Yesus? You see that? That's close. So, I'm not saying this is a true word, but I'm going to tell you this. This is a lot closer in Hebrew. The point is, you don't have strong evidence for this. And number two, it is very weak evidence to say this. It could, it's very likely it's wrong even during the biblical days. That's important to understand. This is the Hebrew, in fact... In rabbinical writings, generally, generally, general rabbinical writings and general rabbinical sources, I'm talking about Jewish sources here, including their Talmud, they mention Jesus as Yeshu. Wow, even the Talmud. Wow. How about that? Not only that, when they have Yeshua, this is very interesting. They did find Yeshua in the rabbinical writings. 
But you know who Yeshua was referring to? It's never to Jesus. It's to the Old Testament character Joshua. And they mention Yeshua. But whenever they mention Jesus in the rabbinical writings, they don't give him that name. They give him Yeshu. Thus, even proving that Yeshua is not the same as Jesus said. That's something to think about. I'm talking about rabbinical writings here, including their Jewish Talmud. I'm giving Hebrew here, folks. Hebrew. If you think that's not enough, this is even stronger. It's going to get even stronger, the evidence. We're going to first look at John 19, though, to explain all of this, all right? Let's look at John 19. Summary of this is going to be at John 19. So Pilate, he's writing in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. When he gives that name, he's not going to give a totally different off-the-chart name. He's going to give it very similarly then. Look at John 19. John chapter 19. I mean, look, this Hebrew is closer to this with Latin and Greek. Again, like I mentioned to you, pronunciation, the pronunciation is different. It's different. Just like how an American would say a Hispanic person's name or an Hispanic would talk, mention an English person's name. The way they would pronounce it or say it would be different, but it's going to retain the same name. That's the point. It's going to be close to it. That's normal. Look at John chapter 19, and we'll look at verse 19. The Bible reads right here what Pilate wrote, Jesus' name. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Look at verse 20. It was written in what? Hebrew and Greek and Latin. I told you so right here. John chapter 19, verse 19 through 20. So he wrote it. He wrote his name in those three languages. He's not going to give totally different name all of a sudden when he gives it in a different language. Here's another thing, though, which is even stronger. I want you to jump to Mark chapter 14, verse 36. Mark chapter 14, verse 36. If you think that was strong, this is even stronger. What was the language during Jesus' time period? This is why it's going to be different from modern Hebrew. This is modern Hebrew, which is a thousand years after this. So there's a big drastic difference here. What do you think is the language during Jesus' time? I don't know if you knew this, folks. It's not modern Hebrew. It's Aramaic Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Jesus and the people during that time, they spoke Aramaic Hebrew. You notice that that was the language Jesus spoke when you look at Mark chapter 14, verse 36. That word, when he says Abba, Father, that is Aramaic Hebrew. That is Aramaic Hebrew. Okay, so look at Mark chapter 14 and verse 36. Notice what Jesus says here. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. So notice he's using Aramaic Hebrew here. Now, I don't know if you knew, knew the root word of Aramaic Hebrew. Ar uh, Aramaic Hebrew, it comes from... Uh, or Aramaic, excuse me, Aramaic itself, and then it combined with Aramaic Hebrew, it came from a mixture of Syriac and Arabic. Wow, really? So it's a mixture of the geography, geographical locations right there. And then later on Hebrew. Now think about this. Do you know, this is why this is going to be very weak in evidence, I'm telling you. Do you know what the Syriac would say about Jesus' name? Jesus' name in the Syriac or Aramaic pronunciation is Yeshu. Not this. You know what it is in Arabic? It's Isa. In Arabic. That's what it is, Isa. Arabic is Isa, Syriac is Yeshu. But you notice right here, this Isa is, uh, when, when you pronounce it, it's close to right here, Yesus, Isa, Isa, Yesus. See that? The pronunciation is very, it's different, but you can tell it's a similar wording. It's a similar wording right here. Syriac, I already explained it right here with Yeshu. 
So, Aramaic Hebrew, not only that, if you're going to think about this, if Yeshu is the Aramaic or Syriac pronunciation, Isa is the Arabic pronunciation, guess what? The Aramaic, I don't know if you knew this, the Aramaic pronunciation is Yeshu. Aramaic. Huh. Now, do you see how weak this evidence is? We're going not only by Hebrew sources, we're going to Aramaic, the language that the disciples spoke that time, and they combined it with Hebrew, Aramaic Hebrew. I mean, if you look at the origins of Aramaic and Aramaic itself, and then not only that, Aramaic with the Hebrew, we already looked at the Hebrew, where does this come from? Very weak in evidence. Now, one thing to understand is that to make a big deal about how Jesus' name, real name, is pronounced is very silly, even according to Jews. you got to understand that it's very silly according to Jews. In Hebrew, it doesn't matter if it's pronounced in different ways. It's not right or wrong to them. That's important. This is why I stressed so much earlier that when God gives different languages to different people, and they're worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, he doesn't care how that name is pronounced or how it's said in their own language. He doesn't care about that. This is a matter of fact in Judaism. Just This is Judaism 101 Hebrew alphabet. Okay, This is just the Hebrew alphabet. This is found by uh, Judaism 101, 1995 to 2011 by Tracy R. Rich. The title is called Hebrew alphabet. Quote, this is why the Jewish Festival of Lights, in Hebrew, Chait Nun Kafhai, is spelled Chanukka, or Chanukka, with double K, Hanukkah, with the H, and many other interesting ways. Each spelling has a legitimate phonetic and orthographic basis. Wow. None is right or wrong. Oh, wow. So God doesn't make a big deal when you worship the Lord Jesus Christ. In your language. That's important to understand. This is why I'm tolerating this in what? Modern Hebrew. I'm not saying this is true Hebrew or biblical Hebrew. In modern Hebrew, I tolerate this. But in biblical Hebrew, that is not the true name of Jesus Christ. you got to understand that fact. That is not the true name of Jesus Christ. Not only that, you also got to understand that... There are Jews today who became saved Christians. They don't even believe in saying this one. Didn't you know that? Uh, I've actually talked to some who are Jews. Not Gentile who, who are wannabe Jews. Yeah. Okay? I'm talking about real legitimate Jews here. Yeah. There are legitimate Jews who don't even believe in saying this. I, I don't know if you that. noticed that. That's good. Me, yeah. I'm more lenient than Jews for you to say <laughs> this. Oh, because the reason why I'm lenient toward you guys is because I'm trying to be fair in argument. That's why when I debunk Yahweh completely, I'm being very fair. This one is definitely a no policy toleration right there because that came from a pagan god. There's no doubt about that. That's not even modern Hebrew. That's totally off bogus. Yeah. But the thing is this, is that concerning Yeshua right here, you've got to understand that let me give a testimony. I had a Jewish Christian who dealt with a bunch of Yeshua movement people. Uh. This is important to understand. I want you people online to understand this. And I don't want people who say Jesus' name is Yeshua misunderstand me here. I'm not saying all Yeshua people do this, but there are. If you, there is a movement of Yeshua people. And these people, they would insist to call Jesus as Yeshua, not Jesus. They would always say Yeshua, Yeshua, and they will insist not saying Jesus. In fact, there are people who speak English online, yeah. and when they speak English online, when it came to the name of Jesus, they don't give the common courtesy of speaking in their English tongue, giving Jesus an English name. They will switch it to modern Hebrew all of a sudden. They would just switch that all of a sudden to Hebrew right there. If they're going to switch this to Hebrew, they've got to say everything else that they say in Hebrew, not English. That's what they should be doing. But there's this Jewish Christian who I talked to. She was within a group of a Yeshua movement people. And these people weren't even Jews. <laughs> these people weren't even Jews. And this Jewish Christian told me that 
she was very troubled when these people kept telling her, who's a Jew, they told this Jew, don't call her Jesus, call her Yeshua, call her Yeshua. And she told me that whenever she would say that, she felt an ominous spirit behind it. She did not feel comfortable about it. There felt some kind of ominous presence around it. So here's the thing, is that I'm not saying that the translation here is demonic, but I'll tell you one thing, the movement behind this name, I believe it's demonic. You know why I say that? Because Paul warned to the Galatians about the Jews who forced them to follow their Jewish customs. Wow. And Paul, he said that he would even wish that they were cut off, damned. That's how strong Paul was. What God hates is you enforce your culture on somebody else. When God ordained the differences of languages ever since the Tower of Babel. Yeah, that's good. You got to realize this. Every language you have is God ordained. God planned it that way. Leave it as it is. Don't think that you're the superior race something and that you have to force somebody down to your culture, your language. God hates that. He doesn't care who you are. Anybody else around the world can call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. Whatever language or ethnicity you are, he opens salvation to all.